Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, young men of Calabar, let us gather and get ready for the start of this Founders Day lecture. So those on the outside who are able to or who are not being otherwise detained, please join us in the chapel. We begin by recognizing the chairman of the board of Calabar High School, Reverend Carl B. Johnson, other members of the board, Mr. Michael Roof, Principal, Mr. Albert Corcho, Acting Vice Principal, other members of the Calabar Administrative Academic Ancillary Team, our Guidance Counselor, Mrs. Jarrett, our Distinguished Old Boys, other invited guests, of course, members of the choir, the Calabar High School Choir. They have been very, very busy over the last couple of days. And in a very special way, well, thanks to the cadets who are ensuring the smooth flow of traffic and doing what cadets do on the outside of the church. But we'd now like to specially recognize, acknowledge, and celebrate our presenter this evening. But I'm not the one doing the introduction, but just to, in a very special way, let's give a warm welcome home to Dr. Jermaine McAlpin. We're now going to assume the appropriate position for the national anthem.
Please remain standing as we invite Reverend Merlin Hyde Riley to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pause in this moment to acknowledge your presence with us, to acknowledge that you are Lord of creation, that we continue to experience your goodness, your grace, and your constancy throughout every season in our lives. We celebrate, O oh God, with thanksgiving, the fact that the Calabar High School was founded. We celebrate the many ways in which you have used this institution to touch and to transform the lives of so many persons. We thank you for the hope that has been realized and for the fact that even today, the school continues to play a very important role in the molding and shaping of lives. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, recognizing the hope that is made possible through the ministry, through the mission, through the work of this institution. So Lord, as we gather here tonight, we give you thanks. And we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit and your leadership, even as we engage in this time of reflection on the past, on the present, and on the future. We therefore commit the proceedings into your hands and we pray that it will be a meaningful and fulfilling exercise and experience for all of us gathered physically in this space and those who have joined online. So into your hands we commit our lives and we commit the future of Calabar through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Merlin Hyde Riley. You may be seated. Except the choir, of course, because they're going to treat us now to a very special selection. Let's hear it for the Calabar High School Choir. See 
Let's hear it one more time for the choir. They have been very busy. And now to officially introduce, not because he's a stranger, because he's not, especially those of us who were at Calabar when he was at Calabar, but of course, like a true lion, he has continued to grow and expand his horizons. And so we're going to invite Mr. Michael Roof to introduce our presenter this evening. Mr. Chairman, grant me leave to say that the life, work, and worth of our esteemed presenter is pointedly mirrored in the words of the celebrated author, D.M. Pratt, who said, Excellence is never an accident. It's the result of intention, effort, intelligence, execution, and seeing obstacles as opportunities. In a few minutes, we will hear from this stellar study in erudition, whose enduring relationship with his beloved school began three plus decades ago, when he entered the portals of this venerable institution as a wide-eyed and excited grade seven student. In the ensuing seven years, he would participate in no insignificant way in cricket, debating, the junior achievement, ISCF, student council, and in 1996, in his capacity as captain of the school's challenge team, he would take the team to the finals. He returned to coach the school's challenge team while a student at the University of the West Indies. He graduated from the UWI in 1999 with a Bachelor's of Science with honors, majoring in political science and international relations. Three years later, he would receive an MSc in comparative government and political theory from the UWI, and later on, a Master's of Arts in political science from the prestigious Brown University. His academic credentials gained added luster when he was conferred with a Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science in 2006, again from the Brown University. The currency in which we treat with this esteemed alumnus dwells in the realm of the superlative. From 2006 to 2007, he was adjunct professor in the Department of African Studies at Brown University and transitioned to Jamaica in 2007 to take up a post with indefinite tenure as lecturer for transitional justice and political institutions. He assumed the role of associate director of the Center for Caribbean Thought at the UWI, a position which he held from 2009 to 2017. In 2017, he assumed the position of associate professor and Chair of African and African American Studies at the New Jersey City University. His breathtaking resume lists his membership on a search committee for the Assistant Provost for Student Success and the Director for the Lee Hagan Center. His peer review publications speak to book chapter, Truth in the Shadow of Mass Violence, an examination of the South African and Grenadian Truth Commissions. His edited volumes include Caribbean Reasonings, Rupert Lewis, and the Black Intellectual Tradition. His journal article, articles, book reviews, encyclopedia entries, reports, seminars, and presentations are a potent testimony of his high academic pedigree. The raft of taught courses include 
African philosophy, Caribbean African political thought, African politics, social justice and social movement, transitional justice. His research areas span transitional justice and truth commission, reparations, genocide and human rights, mass media and politics. Mr. Chairman, we behold this esteemed colleague who has by his unbridled focus, undiluted focus, and unrelenting pursuit of excellence brought an unalloyed honor to our school. And so I invite you to provide a tumultuous round of applause as Dr. Jermaine Omar McAlpin, a towering academic colossus, distinguished leader of thought, influential collaborator, and lodestar to many, approaches the podium to address us on a topic which is germane to the evolution of our beloved school, building on a heritage of excellence. Good evening, everyone. I would like to express my sincere gratitude, but the person um, my colleague Michael Roof introduced couldn't be here today, so I'll speak on his behalf. I want to say a very special thanks to the organizing committee for Founders Day and the Founders Week celebration. I'd like to especially thank uh, my friend Owen Ferguson for his constant communication over the last four months in inviting me to participate. To use Owen's favorite expression, respect brethren. Thank you to the school's administration, the board and all of the organizing members of this Founders Week. It's my esteemed honor to be here and to be empaneled among the Founders Day speakers. I thank you to all the teachers I've had at Calabar, and I won't list them all, but from my seventh grade history teacher, Miss Beverly Shirley, she was my first form teacher, uh, through to Mrs. Jennifer Gordon, my English literature teacher, to Mr. Grant, my fourth form supervisor, to Mr. Martin, there are members here in the audience who know what we used to call him, but I won't uh, say it here, uh, but he is um, certainly um, someone who helped to mold me. To Mrs. Tully Reed, my uh, A-level history teacher, and to my history teacher slash quiz coach and fellow Calabar Lion, Jeremy Taylor, uh, hearty congratulations and thank you. And until four days ago, he was QC. But now the title will not be repeated here in this sacred assembly because it would be sacrilegious to say those two letters together. Today, I was invited to talk about building on a heritage of excellence, reflecting on 110 years of Calabar High School. Our school motto, the utmost for the highest, and I am reflecting on the first time in this um, worship building. This church was in 1990 because we were doing renovations at the chapel and so we had assembly right here in this building. So it brings back fond memories. But in our chapel, our school chapel, the Latin expression of our motto, Palmam Ki Meruit Ferrat, let whoever earns the palms or the rewards bear it. And so loosely translated, the utmost for the highest. The utmost for the highest means not just to excel, but to excel at all cost. Excellence is a burden, but it is a good burden to bear. We show we are deserving of the reward by building a legacy. And so in reality, the utmost for the highest is really our utmost for God's highest. The name Calabar as a student of history, is derived from Peribo Calabari, 
and he was the antecedent of the Ijao people in southeast Nigeria. We do not call them tribes because they were peoples. They never call themselves tribes. The Portuguese, by the late 15th century, named the entire group of people Calabari. Eventually, a river and a city were also named Calabari. And by the arrival of the British around 1876, the name had been changed to Calabar. When you have a heritage that extends 700 years in the past and stretches across 6,000 miles, you are from the stock and DNA of excellence. For no slaves left Africa, but peoples that were enslaved. Africans left Africa, but that's another lecture for another time. You do not exist for 110 years as an institution without a tradition of greatness and excellence. In 1912, the world was two years away from the start of World War I. Calabar High School was established so that the sons of the working class could be given the best education. The name was serendipitous, depicting the strength and resilience of our ancestors who persevered through the ignominy and inhumanity of the transatlantic trade in Africans. It was this name that would be given to the theological college and eventually to our beloved high school. It is the memory of the strength of this ancient river, Calabari, that commences our school song, like an ancient river flowing from the mountain to the sea. This ancient river flowed across two continents, and on Thursday, September 12, 1912, the Reverends Ernest Price and David Davis, principal and tutor respectively of Calabar Theological College, founded Calabar High School under the joint sponsorship of the Baptist Missionary Society of London and the Jamaica Baptist Union. It is this heritage of excellence that forms the foundation of my remarks. And I was told that I had two hours to speak. No, I'll only speak for 27 minutes. It is my own upbringing and indoctrination through the corridors, classrooms, and play fields of Calabar that have made this address possible. A young, bright-eyed, some would say big-eyed, dark-skinned boy who grew up on the banks of the Hope River in Augustown and then spent his formative years in Portmore and traveled to Calabar by the winding, unending route of the edgy starting in Bayside, Portmore, and terminating in Crossroads. Calabar gave me the opportunity to thrive academically, but also intramurally. From formal sports such as cricket, football, and rugby, to informal sports such as money TT, money football, crabbit, by Long Island, and between 1989 and 1991, the facilities of crabbit football were transformed into the new 7th through ninth grade blocks. To service and religious clubs such as Key Club, Environmental Club, Students Council and ISCF, and also entrepreneurial learning through junior achievement. It was this philosophy of Calabar as a total institution, one that sought to the development of self, society and school. A total institution instills the values and extols the virtues of hard work and excellence. As a young boy, it was seeing this from a distance that made Calabar the only school that I placed on my common entrance choice sheet in 1988. As fate would have it, while I was selecting Calabar, Hurricane Gilbert was preparing to wreak havoc on Founders Day 1988 and the entire Jamaica. It is this, my fellow lions, that we must return to, the philosophy of our school, not just as a place to pass the time and to acquire five or more subjects. It is to be an institution that imparts and impacts all aspects of young men's lives. Calabar developed this model of the total institution, and it is to that model we must return. So you may ask, the theme is building on a heritage of excellence. What is this heritage of excellence? 
Calabar's heritage of excellence can be defined as the intergenerational transfer of wisdom and knowledge that focuses on building on the legacy of the development of boys into men and cubs into lions. If you go back to our school crest, it enlivens this reality. A lion sits under the tree of life across from the book of knowledge. I would argue that the heritage of excellence that Calabar has thrived on for these 110 years has five dimensions. The first is academic and scholastic excellence. The second, religious and moral leadership. The third, sporting mastery and proficiency. The fourth, a commitment to nation and to humanity. And fifth, cultural innovation. That is the heritage of excellence that has made Calabar great. I will not regale you today with the stories of Calabar lions who have left their indelible marks in all areas of society. But to be committed to the call of Calabar is not only for champs time to wear a green and black tie or shirt. If you are truly answering the call of Calabar, then you must play your part in building on the foundations of excellence that our founders, Reverends David Davis and Ernest Price, and the entire Calabar family has thrived on. Calabar is not great in comparison or competition with any other school. We are great simply because of who and what we have produced. I am, however, more interested in having a conversation about how do we translate this history of excellence into a contemporary language that the young men at Calabar today and across Jamaica can understand. And so I would offer to you that the way we convert this history of excellence into contemporary excellence is by one word, mentorship. In Greek mythology, Telemachus was placed under the care of his father's best friend, mentor, whose job it was to protect and guide him in the absence of his father. In reality, mentorship is not just a visitation to Calabar on special occasions. Lions, we are called to protect and guide cubs into becoming lions. Mentorship translates tradition into contemporary excellence. We must have an intergenerational transfer of wealth and knowledge to the young men of Calabar today. A heritage of excellence can only be maintained by passing it on, not in the haphazard, accidental way. Mentorship must be intentional and motivated by the desire to see greatness, not just old Lang Syne, but in 2022 and beyond. Today, our young boys need to see men as role models. They need to be aware and to be able to model lives that are more important than the quickness and easiness of getting fast money. When was the last time you imparted wisdom to a young man? As the world turns, we can still benefit from the lessons of the past, but we need someone to translate it in TikTok or IG Reel for this generation. We need to do a better job of intergenerational transfer. We cannot return to any glory days without a meeting of the generations. If we are to think of Calabar in its 110 years of existence, we can do six, roughly six generations. The first generation would be from 1912 to the 1940s. The second from the 1940s to the 1960s. The third from the 60s to the 1970s. And the fourth from the 1980s to the early 90s. The fifth would be from the 1990s to what I call pre-social media. And the last and present generation would be the social media Instagram generation. The button has not been effortlessly passed. There was a fumble and sometimes the baton falls, 
but we need to pick up and pass it on. I want to offer to us that we cannot rest on the achievements of the past or we will become a has-been school. The Old Boys Association is central to this mission in partnership with the current school administration, the parents, the teachers, and the young men themselves. But I want to offer to you quickly eight things that are right with Calabar and four things that need strengthening. The first, significant academic improvement over the last decade. The second, a conscious effort at beautification and aesthetics. In other words, representing the school as a place that people want to be at. Third, the preservation of legacy through the establishment of the Calabar Museum and Wall of Fame. Fourth, the contribution of old boys to the school's overall development. Fifth, the mentorship program. And I would argue that that needs to be expanded and supported by old boys as your reasonable service to your institution. In that regard, your official standing as an old boy should mean that you have contributed to the school since you left. Sixth, old boys sending their sons to the place that built them. Seventh, visiting the school to impart knowledge and wisdom to the young men. And eighth, old boys who contribute financially and otherwise to the welfare of the boys. But there are four things that need strengthening. The first, we need to collectively develop a sustained program for wide-scale academic progress. Progress is not just isolated cases of success. Progress is collective. We need to work together to ensure that Calabar returns to its place as the high school of choice for young men across Jamaica and across the region and not the next best option or the last resort. Second, we need to have a clear model of what is the ideal Calabar graduate to look like. It is in Proverbs 29, 18, we are told that without vision, the people perish or are unrestrained. We need to have a vision of what the Calabar lion should look like after five to seven years. A wise man once said, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. We cannot just have a mission and a vision. We must do as Habakkuk 2, 2 says, as God speaks to Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain to them. So we need to translate who we want these young men to be. Third, and very importantly, we need to inculcate the values of, and traditions of Calabar early and often. John Messam was a walking indoctrinator. He would come to our classroom and he would speak on the glories of Calabar and he wasn't using a book, he was just talking extemporaneously. And it was John Messam who got me indoctrinated into this philosophy of Calabar that nothing else mattered the way Calabar did. Right? And so we have to return to this indoctrination of Calabar greatness. The color culture day is important but every day should be color culture day. Every day our young men should learn about the glorious tradition of Calabar, not designed and established here in Kingston, Jamaica, or even in Trelawney, but in Southeast Nigeria, spanning 6,000 miles. Fourth, we need to have a consistent emphasis and the attendant resources on the academic welfare of our boys. We are often prone to knee-jerk reactions to critiques that come from inside or outside. We must be driven by developmental plans that are widely shared by all stakeholders so that excellence comes to define Calabar. When you look at some of the inflections in our school song, and I would pause to say unapologetically it is the best school song ever written. And so when we look at some of the inflection points, and I want to focus on a few, 
So we follow, coming, going. The ancient river must flow both ways. In other words, we must create tributaries to help others. Do not build a dam where a bridge is required. Men of Calabar be a bridge to carry a young lion to his best potential. On our course, Calabar's success and renaissance is every lion's business. Not just the lettered and the famous, the wealthy, it is every lion's business. True as steel in our zeal. Do not listen to the critics. Most of them have never done what they are criticizing you about. When I traveled to Coronation Market with my mother in my early years on Saturdays, she would say to me, Omar, don't get distracted by the noise in the market. Watch who make the sale. Never be daunted by those who speak because those who shout the most often have the least to say. Duty's voice is ringing clear. You should think of yourself as duty bound as a graduate of Calabar to assist in building and strengthening this heritage of excellence. Bidding men to brave endeavor, we will answer, we are here. So even as the critics criticize you for helping to build your school, they may call you a member of a cult. You must still answer, we are here. Come what will, good or ill, we will answer we are here. And I want to focus on here. Here simply means to be in a particular place or position, but it also indicates one's presence in a meeting or roll call. But it is the second meaning that I want to talk about in our school song. Here, sir, here, sir. It means I am present and ready for duty. The Jamaican anthem has the line, stir response to duty's call. We are not just to be in positions of power, influence and connection, but we are to answer the call to uplift and build our school, not just by embellishing the architecture and the edifice, but building the young men who will walk through the great gates of 61 Reddles Road. You must return to the pride, lions, and impart what you have gained in your wider life. But here, sir, is also a commitment, knowing that thousands of other lions have walked on the banks of the ancient river, have been nurtured by it, and have followed it all across the world. I want to remind Calabar lions that every single one of us have satisfied the minimum criterion for the right of return to Calabar. And that is simply that you attended Calabar. It is not your year of departure, your current occupation, your economic wealth or lack thereof, whether you are a man of letters or the deliverer of letters, whether you are a lion with fleets of car or a lion plying his trade with a car, whether you came from the rolling hills of Westmoreland or the central plains of Clarendon or the footpaths of Trinityville, St. Thomas, whether you are from the inner city or the outer cities, whether you are from zinc-adorned communities or decran tiles and shingle high wall gate premises. Wherever you have emerged from, there's a young man today at Calabar that needs to hear your story. You need to help. And in our long-standing religious tradition, and I close with these, you extend the heritage of excellence in true church fashion First, giving of your time. Only the dead have no time left to give. Show up. We have a Calabar Old Boys Association mentorship program. Each lion must teach another lion. We have for far too long left the rearing of lions up to bears. Only lions can teach lions to be lions. Return to the pride and impart your lessons to a cub. Second, giving of your talents. Consider formal or informal teaching at Calabar. 
The classroom needs men. Lions are required to make lions of cubs. Everywhere we turn, we see talent. But does Calabar get our best selves? Third, giving of your treasury. We are reminded of the biblical injunction in Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. But I'm encouraging you to spend the one you have on earth at Calabar. And whether you have a bills $100 or you have a fat check for $1 million, now depreciated, you can give out of the abundance of your heart to build the lions of Calabar. Remember, whatever we do, it is for the honor of our school. You cannot complain about the current state of Calabar without doing something to make a difference. As we enter the second decade after our centenary celebrations, let us learn from the past and build on its legacy for the future. As I close my remarks, I am reminded of the Akan symbol from the Ashanti people of Ghana, where many Jamaicans have descended, and it is the Sankofa bird. It depicts a bird facing forward, but its head with, a, with an egg in its mouth is facing backward. The expression is Sewewore Sankofa Ayenki, which means it is never a taboo to return and fetch it. Or to put it another way, to build for the future, you must learn from the past. And so I say in closing, return sons of Calabar to your alma mater and help to continue this heritage of excellence. Here, sir, here, sir, so we answer near or far. Here, sir, here, sir, at the call of Calabar. Thank you, Ashe, respect. Thank you. Can we have another rousing round of applause for Dr. Jermaine McAlpin? Now, I'm sure you have been inspired and moved and stimulated and uh, curious, and perhaps you have a question or two, maybe a statement in response to anything that you've heard. We have two microphones in the aisle, and uh, they're open. It wasn't meant to be a one-way street. <laughs> it's supposed to be reciprocal, reciprocity. So who wants to go first? A comment, a question, a thought, an idea, a suggestion, a criticism. Professor Aiken. Thank you very much, Durban. That was an excellent talk, Dr. McAlvin. Um, you mentioned, as one of the eight strengths, the fact that old boys are sending their sons to Calabar. But when you speak to a lot of old boys, um, you get the impression that although they are proud Calabar old boys, they are not practicing sending their sons to Calabar and that they have misgivings um, with Calabar. How can we change that mindset? Because I think that 
if more old boys are invested in the school by virtue of sending their sons to Calabar, it definitely will elevate the institution. So how can we change that mindset? I would use a, a religious analogy. Uh, you know, I have some of those as friends and I would call them Calabar agnostics. So they have, they have a general belief, um, but they are not convinced in their knowledge of the importance of sending their sons to Calabar. Uh, there are many decisions that go into sending your son to Calabar. But if it could build you as a person, I think that's the initial ground zero. If it could build you as a person, then you should expect that it can build you. And it takes investment, right? It's, it's a calculated risk for some. Um, and one may say I can speak authoritatively in this way because I have a daughter and therefore I don't have uh, this challenge ahead of me. But I would offer an encouragement to those who may be skeptical. Uh, you can't expect excellence of Calabar if you don't buy into the product. So no matter how attractive a stock is, if you've not placed an investment in the stock, you can't yield the returns. And I think arguably that's the best way to understand um, sending your sons. It is a declaration of faith that the place that built me can also build uh, my son. Uh, there are challenges, but I call later on life the great equalizer. In the grand scheme of things, life does not apportion the benefits because you went to this or that school. It is what you do with what you have been given. Right? And I still believe in the Calabar product and the Calabar output. You have to make an investment. There are always risks to the investment, but you should do everything to hedge that investment by what? Personally investing in the school. I find that when you have a personal stake in the success of something, you're more, more likely to see it through. And so, uh, applaud it to those who have done the work of sending their sons to Calabar, sometimes um, against the best um, advice of the mother or others in the family. Uh, but you have bucked the trend and you have sent your sons to Calabar. Send more sons to Calabar because if it produced you, then it can produce other young men just like you. Good night, everyone. Dr. McAvey. Blessings. Nice to see you. Um, just following up on that point, um, you used the analogy of stocks and invested in the stocks, but also what it is that or what do we need to do to also make Calabar and the legacy of Calabar more attractive to persons, um, whether it be old boys who have sons and their wives may not want them to come Calabar or in order to grow the pool of new lions, I mean persons who may not have had any connection with Calabar but to make it more attractive because I, get, I agree with you, it will always be for me and for many of us one of the premier if not the premier school in Jamaica. I think the challenge becomes how we sell the product of Calabar. I think we've done soft marketing and so we've assumed that people know about Calabar simply because it has been in existence but what do we want them to know about Calabar in other words we have to know uh, be better at controlling the narrative right for for too long we have done the response after a story breaks after there is a tangential line after there is less focus on the stellar achievements of our young men and I was very pleased today not only because I see him in the audience with his father, Professor Aking, but when I saw the profile on Matthew, I was very pleased because this happens at Calabar, but oftentimes we don't get this kind of portrayal. And so we have to stop doing soft marketing. We have to market Calabar as a product that people are interested or should be interested in investing in, right? You have to make the product attractive, right? The gate has gone a long way to be a talking point, but we also need to let them know that great things happen beyond the gate, right? The gate is just the entrance to the beautiful kingdom where the ancient river is, 
but we have to sell the product. So I think it's not a question of whether or not we have great teachers, whether we have great principals, great administrations, or great students. It is what we do to market what we have, right? We must be in the, build, the, the business of commerce, selling Calabar as the brand of choice, right? When you look in the supermarket, the thing that often gets purchased the first is what? The product that has the most attractive packaging. And so it's a challenge to us to do better at making the packaging of Calabar attractive because there's substance behind the packaging, but most people will not look at the virtue of the product beyond the packaging. Good evening, everyone. Dr. McClacken, as a youth or a young man who has, who has pledged myself to serve young people, I now see a challenge at Calabar that you know, others would compare with schools like JC and so forth, whereas their rules and, and so forth is concerned. My question is that, as someone who is interested in making a change where that line is concerned, what programs throughout the different faculties that I'm involved in can I make a change? You know, comparison is the enemy of progress, right? Every time you compare yourself with someone else, you are robbing yourself of great potential, right? And so I grew up in the 90s at Calabar, and no matter what we did, there was always a comparison with someone else, which is why I said in my remarks that we're, our greatness is not in competition or comparison with anyone. What we should do and what you should do is to actively seek out old boys who are interested in mentoring young men, right? Uh, Indoctrination is not always bad. We assume indoctrination is only negative, right? Uh, indoctrination by invitation, right? Into this um, confraternity of Calabar focuses on molding uh, young men into uh, the wider life. And so the, there is a mentorship program. Uh, you should seek after student leadership that helps to sell the product of Calabar, make Calabar attractive. The only way you will stop those comparisons, it doesn't happen overnight, right? We have to have a plan, right? A 10-year plan, a five-year plan as to how Calabar, Jamaica has or had a vision 2030. We need a, a developmental plan in that way that says, this is where we are going. This is where we will get to. And the gate is not the end. It is the beginning of the transformation, right? And so I tell my young lions that, Think of yourself as a constant work in progress, right? Don't compare um, an empty can with nothing in it with one that is now full of beans and wrapped in the final package, right? Eventually, we will get back there. But that heritage of excellence that I spoke about has to start with each young man uh, owning, owning Calabar as his own, right? Um, when I was here, we would have these conversations and young men would say, well, it's not my furniture. It is your furniture. Because if it is destroyed, then we have less facilities for our young men to learn. In other words, sell to your court the need for seeing ownership of Calabar. Right? And I think that is important, a very important starting point. Uh, the mentorship program, uh, getting into this idea that Calabar belongs to you. You are a stakeholder. Right? You are an investor in Calabar even as a student. Doesn't mean you're going to march into the principal's office and say, I own the place. But you are partnering along with the other young men. Have an investment in Calabar. When I was here, we had junior achievement. And we wanted to ensure that Calabar was number one in selling our products. Right? Think of Calabar as a product. You have to have a marketing campaign. You have to have a good product. And you have to be able to sell this to others. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Mr. MC, we have a question from our participants on YouTube. Yes, we are streaming on YouTube. Welcome, everyone. So the question is from Maureen Lindsay. Thanks for your question, Maureen. She says, good evening. Will the Old Boys Association avail themselves as mentors for the boys, especially grades 10 and 11? Well, I, I referenced mentorship several times in my presentation. 
including that we have a Calabar All Boys Association mentorship program. And we have the, uh, the persons who are supervisors of that program here. And so, yes, we have such a program. Uh, if there's a specific request, then the All Boys Association can be contacted because we do have a mentorship program. But here's the challenge. That was what I echoed in my presentation. You can't have five Calabar Lions that participate in the mentorship program. So you see them in grade seven, in grade eight, in grade nine. You see them throughout the school. We need more Calabar old boys to be mentors. Do not think of mentorship as something that requires you to be the best at speaking, to be the most eloquent. You don't require any of those things. You simply need a willingness to mold the life of a young man. Right? And there's training. Right, Howard? We have training for mentors. We have given out the call. So we want to sing the school song in closing at the call of Calabar to remind you that we have been calling you, but you have allowed your phone to go to voicemail. We have been calling for mentorship and for Lions to return to mentors. So please contact the mentorship program of the Old Boys Association. We do have a program, a formal program, but we need more Calabar Lions. Five won't do it, 10 won't do it. I wasn't great at mathematics, but if you can think of 110 years of existence, even if 100 persons graduated every year, we have well over 1,000 uh, Lions available, and we have far more than that. And so we should have enough opportunities for Lions to return to Calabar. We had our welcome service yesterday, and we had Calabar Alliance welcoming the incoming first formers, but we need you to show up and to represent not just your class of 89 or 94, but to represent the Calabar old boys and to lead the charge of mentorship. So yes, we have such a program. Um, good evening. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. I truly enjoy your presentation. Thank you. And as an outsider, I'm not an old boy, but my son currently attends Calabar. So you have an investment in this stock. Right. Yes. That's correct. All right. You said that um, we should not really compare, but quite a bit of that is going on on the track, and rightfully so we are successful at it because the work is being put in. I think a comparative um, effort should be placed in the classroom, right? So we'll be in a better position to market Calabar because the worst thing we can do is to market a product that is not so much 100%, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I think we should put in the work and then we'll market it and then we are in a position to compare and compare favorably. Thank you for the question, but you know, I think it's the other comp you're thinking about. I like the concept, but it's more to make us more competitive, right? For us to be more competitive, I agree that you have to sell what you are best at, right? In economics, and I have some of my classmates from A-level economics, we had comparative and competitive advantage, right? And so it is not just what happens on the physical chevron is also what happens in the or on the track of academics right uh, whatever else is said whatever else has been said Calabar is an academic institution first a total institution of learning where boys are to be groomed and grown into these five dimensions I spoke about so I agree we have to do what we do best and to market what we do best right and that's not just winning champs 20 odd uh, times it is also who we have produced in terms of all those traditions we have but we have to do a better job of selling this to the current generation who are not going to look in history books in the same way we did because they have Google and Wikipedia so if it's not there then it doesn't exist right they're not going to Encyclopedia Britannica right they're not going to any of these sources and so we have to do the uh, indoctrination in such a way that as they come in, 
they are indoctrinated into the values and virtues of Calabar. So I agree, we have to do what we do best and to do it excellency, uh, excellently, and that includes uh, branding what we have contributed. You know, I love to tell persons that some of my rival schools that if no one from your school helped to write the national anthem, then you can't have a conversation with me. And if you've never produced a prime minister, then you can't uh, have a conversation with me. And if your school wasn't the first at many things, then we don't need to talk. We are not equals. But we won't name such uh, competitors in this conversation. This is an exclusively Calabar conversation. But the point is not to brag. It is to ensure that when we talk, we have the attendant back it behind it. And I think that is part of what we have to do a better job, that when we speak, not only do we speak loudly, but we are making the sale in the market. Thank you very much, Dr. McAlpin. One more time, let's hear it for our presenter. And speaking of presenter, well, I don't, I'm not supposed to speak about it. I'm supposed to just shift. Well, let me just shift the microphone because I always seem to find myself speaking after these. <sighs> Outstanding Calabar students. <laughs> Thank you very much, Howard. Um, I'd like to make my two or three comments on Dr. McAlvin's lecture to highlight about three points that he made. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to speak briefly at a graduation ceremony. And one of the things I said and I asked the boys to do was to listen to the words of our school song, to go home and read it over and over again. For many of us, myself included, I never really understood that song until I was in my 30s because the song is instructive and it teaches you lessons about life that I didn't see until I was an adult, and looking back at the song, I started to read it again and reflect on it. Jermaine described it, explained it, and I think that is something that we should do to our young men in school to encourage them to try to understand our song because later in life it will help you along the road, especially when times are challenging. The second point from Jermaine's lecture is um, about giving back, about sending our sons to school back to Calabar. I, for one, and some of us have not had the pleasure or displeasure of having sons. But at the same time, we can give back. We can come back to the school because many of the boys in the school over the last 15, 20 years, I gather, there isn't much of a father figure in their homes. And us as mentors helps them a lot. And this is one of the comments that we receive from the teachers who guide those classes that our mentors participate in, that the boys are looking for father figures and they look up to us when we come every Friday morning or whenever it is that we show up. And they look forward to seeing us. So to the wider Calabar community, I invite you to join our structured mentorship program. It's, I stress the word structured because it is structured. There's training involved for the mentors who help the teachers, who help the boys. There is an explanation of the role that we as mentors are supposed to play and our mentors keep along that line and, and, and help the boys along the way. Um, the third thing from Jermaine's speech, which was explained further, the marketing of Calabar. And in a, in a chat about 
three or four weeks ago at Cafe 61 under the tree, where many old boys show up on a Saturday evening to discuss not only Calabar but other things. Um, the question was raised where is our strategic plan? And several years ago, we developed a strategic plan together with the school and the board, the PTA involved. And I think it's a very good strategic plan. And we've been following it. But we should let the world know that we have this plan. It helps with the buy-in of parents who would like to send their sons to Calabar. So I'm imploring on the school to make that strategic plan more visible to non-Calabar persons and to remind us all what that plan is and where we are in relation to the targets that we set each year. Those are my three points. Thank you very much, Jermaine. And on to why I was asked to be here. Um, Jermaine never left Calabar, as many of you probably realize by now. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing for our school when we have past students who keep on coming back and contributing and sharing. I know Dervan is here every day, or every morning, most mornings, and many others. You know, I know Mr. Karcher is very thankful for that. But Jeremy never left Calabar, and he continues to give. He continues to commit himself to our school, to dedicate himself to the mission, to the Calabar family, to passing on that level of knowledge and experience to the younger boys so that they too can become somebody in their future and can come and give back when their time comes around. So Jermaine, I know you left Jamaica physically a few years ago, but you have never left Calabar. He's always one I can call upon for ideas to participate. He's still a member of the COBA executive and he continues to give us um, that encouragement as we move along to do what we need to do to facilitate our school. So Jermaine, on behalf of the Calabar family, we'd like to present you with a small token of appreciation and for your instructive words earlier. Thank you yes, very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you here. And Keep on walking good and Thank keep you. on doing what you've been doing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> the youngsters, as we have said, they've, they've been very busy over the last couple of days. We're going to make a slight adjustment just to release them a little earlier than scheduled and so right now they are going to lead us in the singing of the school song and then we will revert to the rest of the program. Yes, 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 yes. So we answer their own. 
Not sure if you noticed anything there. Anybody noticed anything? In the in the uh, uh, composition, the no is that is that the word I'm looking for? The arrangement. Thank you, thank you very much. The arrangement. So you might have noticed that. What do you think? Lovely, Lovely. wonderful. Another round of applause for the choir and their leader. Another of our relatively new teachers. Yes, welcome. <laughs> All right, so young men, at the instructions of your teacher, your choir mistress, so a round of applause as they exit. Thank you very much, young men. Alright, so now, a little birdie tells me, I don't know everything, I don't have all the information, but a little birdie tells me that I should invite representatives of the Calabar Old Boys Association South Florida chapter to come forward. Come on, let's hear it. Let's hear it. We don't know what it is yet. I don't know, but let's hear it. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I guess I hear mentioned class of 90s. That sounds like some very young people because I'm class of... 1970 and um, still involved with Calabar because Calabar is a school that never it the green runs through our veins and we eat sleep and think Calabar I found that to be extremely applicable after retirement today I'm here very happy to be in Jamaica on vacation and being asked to do a presentation here. Um, on behalf of the board of directors of the Florida chapter of the Calabar Alumni Association, under the leadership of Mr. Carl Thompson, I congratulate our alma mater on the achievement of 110 years of service and excellence. After three years of being isolated due to the pandemic and conducting Zoom meetings for the past two years with the passion to provide the necessary resources needed to address the various needs of the students at Calabar, I'm pleased today to present Calabar with a check for $5,250,000.
This money started as a project to feed the needy students in the PATH and Welfare Program as, uh, as Project Success Maker and has evolved to address the health and wellness of all students who attend the school. I'd like to especially thank Mrs. Jarrett, who has worked tirelessly with me over the past two years. I'd like to invite Mrs. Jarrett, Reverend Johnson, Mr. Karcher, Mr. Miller, and any other persons that Mr. Karcher would like to invite. He's the principal of the school. Is your phone? Yes. Um, let me, on behalf of the Calabar High School Board of Governors and the entire Calabar family, thank the Florida chapter for this very kind and uh, generous expression of solidarity and ongoing engagement in the life of the Calabar High School. The principal will say a few words, but I, I couldn't allow this opportunity to pass having listened to the presentation by Dr. McAlpin. Uh, to make the point that we live in an interesting world, and I will be the first to hope to raise my hand and admit that I am not from the school that advertises and promotes yourself. I will be, I, I, I confess, I don't do that well. I am, I, am, I am sometimes governed by the biblical maxim, and you quoted a lot of Bible, German, um, this evening, that says, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But I understand fully well the nature of the world in which we live. And it, it, it occurred to me that some of the institutions that exist in this world, if they were giving even one-tenth of this, you would see them on page one tomorrow or page two. But you are giving this not to be seen, but to be felt. And that for me says so much. Please convey our gratitude to President Thompson and the entire chapter for their kindness and for responding. Here, sir. Here, sir. Mr. Courtroom. Thank you, Rev. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I too must add that the presentation by, by Doc was inspiring and I've listened and I've made some plans already. I believe that this presentation should be shared with the entire school's population so we're going to make some arrangement already. I've done that through the vice principal and the guidance counselor so we will be sharing. We're also hoping Doc that the speech and a couple of years ago, we started something at Calabar, um, and we're hoping that your speech can be part of the archive at the library 
so that the young men can see what is happening. Uh, well done, and we are indeed we are really delighted that you have made the trick, you have made the, the effort for this presentation. I said, my only challenge is that other persons needed to be here. So on behalf of the entire school, Doc, we thank you, and we wish for you all the very best. The, our old boys over the years, they have always answered the call. I started my 10th year at Calabar, and I was at a function with some of my other principals. And the question was asked about the involvement of the old boys in the school. And I was the first to raise my hand, because the last 10 years we've seen on all the different facets, financial, the whole thing about social development, we have seen our old boys coming on and they have been part of the progress that is happening that is happening at our school and so more to be done we are really happy for that and the fact that the south Florida chapters come on board again and i say that the young men of calabar the current student will indeed benefit immensely from this contribution we have to ensure that we provide the type of education that will ensure that our young men that they do extremely well and this contribution will go up very far away i really want to add to say that the guidance department has really been instrumental so we mention it i remember when the conversation started a couple of years ago during covid and we made this big plan and i'm happy this evening that part of that plan now is coming together so please state back to your chapter our profound thanks and gratitude and we wish for them all the very best i thank you Thank you very much. Let's hear it one more time for Coba, Florida. At this time, we're going to invite Mr. Owen K. Ferguson to move the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. It remains to me to acknowledge a few folks for what has been for Founders Day 2022 a memorable set of celebrations. We started this journey approximately a year ago when a gentleman to my right, our chairman, nudged us in the board meeting one afternoon to say, 2022 will be a milestone year and we needed to do something special and memorable. And so, fortunately for me, a number of persons put their hands up immediately and offered to assist. And so, permit me to just acknowledge some persons tonight. First of all, to the chairman himself. Thank you, sir, for having the vision and for putting this process into its present form. We were at that time just about emerging from COVID-19, but he saw that it could be so much better uh, if we were to resume normalcy. And so we started that process and got good support from some key individuals who we want to acknowledge this evening. So please allow me to move on to our principal, Mr. Corcho, and to your senior team who have been very instrumental in ensuring that this event starting on yesterday with our church service at Mona Baptist through to our lecture service this evening. This event would not have been possible without yourself and your senior team. So I want to particularly mention Vice President Ro, Vice Principal Ro, I'm promoting him. Vice Principal Ro, who of course, those who know, is on long leave and so is not here physically but I know he's joining the, the stream. So thank you, Mr. Rowe. And to Vice Principal, Mrs. Ms. Wilson, Sian Wilson, who again is not with us this evening, unavoidable because of a recent injury. 
and we send our prayers and, and wishes for quick recovery to Miss Wilson. But if you find that the decor here this evening is attractive, it's due to Miss Wilson's indefatigable effort. So to her and her team, we say thank you. They decorated this evening. They decorated on Mon at Mona on Sunday. And to the newest member of the senior team, our acting vice principal, Mrs. Brown, thank you, ma'am. Here you are before me. She has been a breath of fresh air, very responsive, quick to get things done. And for, for someone like myself, who is not part of the school faculty, she was my hands and feet and eyes, and she was all about getting things done. Thank you so much, Mrs. Brown. To our hosts yesterday, don't have them here as rep representing, but to Mona Baptist, your pastor, Reverend Jennings, and other senior leaders of the Mona Baptist family, thank you for hosting us. And of course, obviously, to our family here at Boulevard Baptist, every Calabar boy is an ex officio member here at Boulevard Baptist. This is where most of our functions have been held. And so, thank you, Boulevard, for facilitating us. Ms. Paris was fantastic and has helped us to, to make this event this evening what it is. And then to the rest of the Calabar family, we saw our choir. Pity they had to leave, but they were so resplendently dressed. Wouldn't you agree? Our choir and our cadets out in their uniforms, doing so elegant and so well. So thank you to those members of the Calabar family as well. And the rest of the Calabar support team. But finally, and most critically, to our audience, you here joining us in person, as well as many of you joining online, we could not have had these events yesterday and today and subsequent events continuing our celebration. It would not have been possible without you, without your support, without your input in, at various levels. We've already acknowledged our guest speaker, and he did mention many interactions we had. He is special in many ways. So again, thank you, uh, Dr. McAlpin. And so as we continue this year of Jubilee, it is for me to encourage all of us to continue to make Calabar the centerpiece and the school of choice and to always pursue the utmost for the highest. Thank you. All that's left for us to do is to thank Owen Ferguson for thanking everyone. Thank you very much, sir. Class is dismissed. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. A bit of post-event mingling, and then we'll be on our way. But thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Safe journey home. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, a benediction, please. Please stand. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and until he comes. Amen. Yeah, no, that definitely sent over.